hold on to him. All right, give me another one of your big questions going into the preseason. Well, I don't know if you've heard this or not. Um, this is just something that I heard. It was just a source. So, guys, get ready if you're listening to this in the car. But this is the first healthy offseason for KP uh, in a long time. And I just – I think, honestly, if – we could say what is one big question, like the biggest question of all, how healthy is KP? Like, is he like all-star KP that right off the bat, and even not even just off the bat, like a month in, what are we looking at? Is this bubble KP? Are we, is he averaging, you know, 27 and nine and shooting 39% from three? Like what, how healthy is KP? That's the biggest question, right? Is now. it all health though with KP this year? Yeah, I think it is because we know he's coming into the season. He's not rehabbing, right? So if he's fully healthy and back to like normal KP before ACL, then he's anchoring the paint. He's he's much better defensively. He can move defensively. The defense lat- for sure. Lat- like all of that. He's shooting at a higher clip like he's actually taking advantage of mismatch what pissed us off more than anything last year is when people could throw like a mugsy bogues on him in the post and it doesn't like nothing happens like he can't take advantage of that if he is more efficient he's if he's healthy enough to make that those possessions more efficient then that's that's what gets scary well, one of my other big questions about kp is is about his role what's his role on offense because Rick Carlisle tried to use him one way and then realized that, the, you know, he had that whole thing with Charles Barkley and Shaq and TNT that the post up isn't efficient. And so KP stopped posting up. Now Jason Kidd's coming in and saying KP is going to post up. So no matter how healthy he is, I think his role in the offense matters a ton because he also had a lot of preferences. He also had a lot of things. He's like, I, I like to play more time in the first quarter than in, you know, then get to play four minutes and then I'm out. And so Rick Carlisle, you know, understood that and and changed Luca's whole rotation pattern for KP. Is Jason Kidd going to do the same thing for KP? What is his his role in it? So, there's two sides of this KP thing. Is it the health that's going to get him back to this All Star level that we know he can play? And obviously, he was a 20 point per game scorer last season, so he's not too far removed from that. Or is it his role? Well, you know, it's just a big question mark with KP. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they're saying all the right things, right? Like, I mean, kids saying everything. Is like, him saying that he's gonna post KP up the right thing? I don't know. I mean, because I don't think so. But the sad thing about that is, at at seven three, it should be a it should be a mismatch, right? Like on the wings for sure. Like on the wings thing when about you're him a four. Wings, yeah, yeah. When you're a four, it should be a mismatch in that. So we'll see. We'll see what you know. He caught he caught the ball a few times in the fan jam. And made some moves like in the paint. You watched it. You know, <laughs> I saw some clips, you know, here and there. <laughs> There's a lot to take away from Fan Jam. So Stop. when you make like he it seemed like he moved a little bit more fluid in that, you know, scrimmage. So let's just see. Like I, I want to see his movement. I think that's the number one thing I'm yep. watching on Wednesday night. Is how not even like if his shots go in. I just want to see him move. <laughs> I just want to see like how are you moving? Because I feel like when we watched him against the Clippers. Like it was so evident of like how like he was like kind of slow. It's kind yep. of a little bit of shades of DeAndre Jordan, you know, cement block feet. And it's like, what? Hey, Los Angeles Laker DeAndre Jordan. Let's he go. He had an alley oop. He had a block. <laughs> uh, I love that your team's old. So they're so old though. Very very. Old. They have like ten players that have more than thirteen years of NBA experience. <laughs> it's nuts. Um, they threw but up a no. graphic of like, look at all the Lakers players that have so much experience. You're like, oh my god, that team is. How many All Star appearances does it take to help LeBron? I mean, come on, he's got so many. <laughs> but no, I, I'm super anxious. I mean, I think the the biggest question mark around this whole team, the huge. whole ce- ceiling of this team, is all around KP. Absolutely huge. Yeah, the, the KP situation is huge. So yeah, you ask about the health, I ask about the role. I think and, both and, both of them matter. And also, how does where does he finish to close games? Is it how committed are they to the yeah. two bigs to close games? Like, it, how committed are they to KP at the four? Like, KP's a four, four, four. Is that just to start games or is that going to be at the end of games? Is he going to, you know, move it to the five? Are they going to bring Reggie in or Sterling Brown or somebody else to, you know, is it dependent on matchups? I just wonder how set in stone and dependent they are or how much they're committed to him at the four. 
Speaking of the Lakers, they had this whole conversation <laughs> this offseason with oh, yeah. you know LeBron and Westbrook sat down with AD and they're like, all right, we got to make this work and figure out what to do. And AD's like, okay, fine, I'll finally play the five. He didn't want to play the five for a long time. That's why you had the JaVale McGee's, the Dwight Howard's, the you know, the Marcus Gasol's, the guys brought in there that to pl- to come in and play the five next to AD. He just didn't want to play there because of injury risk, because of all that kind of stuff. So When will the Mavericks have that type of conversation again? We'll bring that back up again. KP was finally playing the five last season, and it worked pretty well. Gave lots of space for Luka and for everybody else. But we'll see if they cycle through this whole thing again of, okay, we're making KP the four, and then all of a sudden we're like, well, maybe that's not the best thing, and then we'll bring it back to him playing the five again. Right? Like, It just seems like they're going to do that whole cycle again now that it's Jason Kidd in charge charge instead of Rick Carlisle. Because that's what we're – you know, that's what no one's talking about right now, at least a lot is – like it's the new it's the honeymoon stage right like kids stepping in like we're hearing all these new things he's talking about the positive stuff like this is how we're gonna run with it's KP. the honeymoon stage in an arranged marriage it feels like <laughs> okay yeah there you go <laughs> and but like we're hearing about oh man we're gonna empower kp he's a basketball player we're gonna get into yeah, basketball right. we're gonna get him shot so he's gonna be much more involved in the offense he's not gonna be just standing in the corner like we're saying all the right thing we're like yeah 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 but what happened? You, I mean, you don't. You have to be honest about this. But what happens if he does get on the post and he's not efficient? What happens if he's not moving very well laterally? Then it's like, okay, well, so that's why he's not. That's why he was standing in the corner. That's why it was. I mean, believe it or not, I'm gonna try. To, I'm gonna take up a little bit for Rick here. It wasn't just all on Rick of why. It wasn't like this. Rick just you know spun the wheel and's like, KP, you're gonna be in the corner this game. No, it's because it's like, hey, what we have been doing with him wasn't working. So this is kind of what it got relegated to. 